Uh, good morning. Uh, obviously, this is a hard day, but as we announced yesterday, we've decided to make a change in our football leadership. With the support and consultation of Chancellor Boyce and after meeting with Coach Luke, we felt that we needed to move forward in a different direction and inject new energy into the program. Following Thursday's game, I spent a couple of days taking a hard look at the totality of Matt's tenure as head coach. While you can see progress in certain areas, we are not experiencing enough success on the field. From a recruiting, academic, and overall culture standpoint, Matt did a tremendous job, and we will always be grateful for his leadership. However, as I said yesterday, winning is important, and we know that we can win at Ole Miss and compete for championships. Another factor was lack of support. Entering the Egg Bowl, we were optimistic that a strong, a strong finish to the season could build momentum. However, after stepping away from the emotion of Thursday and evaluating the team as a whole, it was evident that the apathy surrounding the program was too much to overcome. We felt it was important to find new leadership that could take this team to the next level, not only from building on our culture, but also translating to wins on the field. Again, we can't thank Coach Luke enough for stepping into, into a time when our program was at its lowest point. He is a, what he has accomplished here as a student athlete, assistant coach, and head coach will never be forgotten, and we certainly wish him the best moving forward. Our search is for a new head coach is underway. We've engaged Ventura partners to assist in this process of identifying a, the strongest candidate and the best fit to lead our program. We would prefer a sitting head coach or Power Five coordinator, but more than anything, we want energy, passion, and a track record for success. We want a program builder who can galvanize and help unite Rebel Nation. As was clear with this season, there's a lot of talent on this roster. And those players in a destination school like Ole Miss, this is a very attractive job, and we look forward to working quickly and efficiently to find our new head coach. Thank you, and I'll open it up for questions. Keith, you talked about the wins and losses. You talked about the apathy. What changed in that regard from two weeks ago when you said you were moving forward with Matt to today when the only change has been since the Egg Bowl? Yeah, you know, I think as we, as we looked um, the, the couple of days since the Egg Bowl, we, we tried to evaluate, we tried to, to get away from that. It was obviously a very emotional night for a lot of reasons. Um, but I think we tried to get away from that. We tried to look at the, the totality of the program. And what I just kept coming back to is that while we could see some, some progress in certain areas, um, have been competitive on the field in, in most games this year, it just felt like that the apathy around the program and just the, the lack of support were going to be hard to overcome. And, you know, going into next year, um, you know, with, with the schedule kind of built the way that it is, um, it just didn't feel like that even if we got to, to five or six or seven wins, that it was going to be enough to, to get – people back and, and get over that hump. So we felt like making the change now was important so that we can uh, in, you know, inter interject new energy and life into the program. Keith, can you give a number, can you estimate a number of players who left the players meeting last night before it was concluded and do you believe you face a challenge in keeping that group together in the coming days? Um, I think there were probably about eight or nine, ten guys that left. Uh, and let me say this. Um, I'm not, I'm not mad or angry at those players. It was an emotional day yesterday. Uh, they love Coach Luke. We all love Coach Luke. And I totally understand the emotion. And I remember when I was 18, 19, 20 years old, emotions sometimes can get the best of you. Um, but absolutely, we're, we're going to do everything we can to support those guys. Uh, I had several of those guys text me after the meeting apologizing, saying that, you know, we lost, we lost uh, control of our emotions. We shouldn't have walked out. Um, and I appreciated that. I responded to them and said, hey, I, I want to sit down with you. I want to talk to you. Um, we want to do everything we can to support our players. And I know for them, it's hard to understand right now why we're doing this. You know, it, it's hard for them because they love their coach. They, they love what they're doing. They've played extremely hard this year. They've been competitive in so many games. And for them, you know, to then you know, have this happen, it's hard. It's a hard situation. And so we want to be there to support we want to show them ultimately that we're going to bring a coach in that is going to help them get over that hump and help them be successful. Um, but, but most importantly right now, we want to make sure that emotionally they're in a good place. And, uh, you know, I have some follow-up meetings already set with, with some guys, and we'll continue to do that. Keith, in, in the Kermit Davis search, over here, Keith, in the Kermit Davis search, it was you and Ross, and y'all were the decision makers. In this search, 
Is it you and someone, or is it just you? Who will have the final say in, when you do make a choice for a coach? Yeah, this will just be me. Um, I'll be working with, with Chad, with uh, Ventura, and um, we're, we're going to work very quickly. We're going to try to be efficient. We'll obviously try to be confidential, but uh, we're going to try to move very quickly. I, I'll, I'll probably have some advisors, some people that will help me along the way, but ultimately when sitting down with candidates, it'll just be me. Keith, I'm curious, over here. I'm curious, when did you start kind of getting a feel for the coaching landscape and when you kind of talked to some people maybe who represent some of the targets that you're looking at, what was kind of the feedback that you got about the Ole Miss job and the way that it's considered today? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I think that, that because of a lot of the hard work that Matt and his staff have done, the program's in a much better place now than it was when he took over, obviously. And I've said it before, I think as we get farther away from a lot of the NCAA issues that, that things continue to get better and better. Um, you know, we started looking at some things a couple of days ago. Um, and, and, you know, you're always looking. As, as an AD, you're, you're always kind of watching games and, and looking for talent and, and those type of things and, and trying to identify people. You may not need them now, but you might need them later. And so that's something that, that I've tried to do really throughout the season. Um, and, you know, really the last couple of days just making some calls and, and trying to, to get a little farther down the line with some potential interest. And what I've learned is people are interested. They're interested in our job. And, you know, I think it's very attractive. Like I said, we have a you know, a, a great roster of, of young men that are coming back next year, a lot to build on. And I think a, a new coach would look at this as a very attractive situation. Keith, what instructions have been given to the current staff in regards to recruiting? And um, will the current staff members be allowed an opportunity to interview with whoever the new head coach is? So uh, I didn't mention this before, but Mike McIntyre will take over uh, and be in charge of the team in the interim, interim period. I uh, spoke with him this morning, and he was more than willing to do that. Um, the, the assistant coaches are on the road right now, and what we've told them is to please just go in and continue the visits, uh, wear the Ole Miss logo, continue to, to spread, you know, the Ole Miss message, uh, and, and they've been great. The assistants have been great. You know, this, this is a hard time for them as well, obviously. Um, but absolutely, you know, as we talk to a new coach, uh, we will encourage the new coach to look at this staff. I think this staff has done a tremendous job in a lot of ways. And I think there's some pieces on this staff that could be very beneficial to, to a, a new staff, potentially. So you know, we, we know how this works. A new coach will have the autonomy to, to bring in who he wants to. Um, but certainly, we will, we will, we will talk about our, our assistants and some of the good things they've done. Keith, what's the time period for the coaching search in your eyes with, obviously, early signing day coming up very quickly? Yeah, like I said, we want to move as quickly as possible. You know, I think with this new signing day, it, it, it complicates things a lot. When you're, when you're making a change like this. Um, but certainly we want to move quickly. You know, I, I don't want to put a time frame on it, but quickly and efficiently, uh, as quickly and efficiently as we can. Have Rich or Mike expressed interest in this job? Do you consider them a candidate at all? You know, right now um, we're kind of looking at all options. We haven't narrowed our list down uh, to kind of a specific list yet of, of you know, four or five names. Um, I haven't specifically spoken to either one of them about this job. But uh, anything right now is on the table. And this is the same firm you use for the Kermit's hire? Is that correct? Correct. Okay. correct. Keith, you're left. Um, financial parameters of all this, cost of getting out of the current deals, budget limitations going forward based on budget cuts that you've had in the last year, obviously it's an expensive proposition all the way around. It is. It is. And um, you know, I think I made some comments last week, though, that we're, we'll always make decisions that are in the best interest of our programs. And, you know, let's be honest, we, we have some financial things we have to work through. Um, you know, with Matt's contract, we can, we can pay it out over a four-year period, which, is, which will help there. Um, our, all of our assistant coaches' contracts have mitigation clauses in them that if they get other jobs, that number comes off of the number that we owe them. So there's some things there that we can work through. Um, but certainly, we'll, we'll handle that internally. You know, there was a lot of, of noise kind of yesterday that there was a booster group that had said they would pay the buyout. I haven't spoken to a single booster about a buyout. Um, not to say that I won't, um, or not to say that I won't talk to them about helping us with a new coach. But uh, we will handle that internally, and uh, we'll work with our department CFO and our foundation CFO to, to make that happen. There's always limitations, Richard. Um, but but we, 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 will, we will be very competitive. We'll be very competitive. We will go out and we'll find the best coach we need to, we need to get, and we will do what we need to do financially to get that coach. Keith, right here in the middle. Um, you spoke of fan apathy with exception or 
with the removal of Matt Luke as a coach, what are some things you and your staff will do to try to regain that support from the fan base? Well, you know, and again, I talked a little bit about this uh, last week, is that, you know, we've got to be out in front of people. Uh, we've got to find a head coach that can walk into a room and, and absolutely take over that room and galvanize people, bring them back. Um, you know, I think people want to support. They want to come back. They want to come to Ole Miss football games. Um, but we just lost some of that luster, you know, and I think bringing somebody in that can have energy, uh, again, they can walk in and, and kind of own a room and, and, and be charismatic and make sure that, you know, that they're talking about the future and the vision of Ole Miss football. Um, I think we can, we can get people back quickly. Aaron Wilson with WTBA. Did Thursday have anything to do with your decision on Matt Luke, specifically with the situation that happened with Elijah Moore and then something similar happen, happening a few years before with another player under Matt Luke's leadership? Did that have anything to do with your decision to move forward without him? Um, I don't think specifically that that incident did. I mean, I think it was a totality of, of everything. Um, you know, I think that as you, as you look at uh, the wins and losses on the field, you know, that was, that was one of the main things. And then I think that, you know, with, with the way the game ended on Thursday, um, you know, it was, it was a little bit of an exclamation point on uh, some of the apathy that was out there already. And I think that it, it, it probably put some people uh, on the other side of that, that that maybe we couldn't get back. And so, you know, certainly the game, the way it finished w was a factor. But by, by no means was it the, the only factor or the main factor. Um, not to keep coming back to this, but uh, in the Kermit search, you mentioned many times afterwards how much you appreciated being actively involved in that process. What did you learn from that to now lead this search and be the only person you know that's kind of directing it? How big, how important was that? Yeah, it's very important. You know, I think that, um, you know, the thing I learned about that search is confidenti confidentiality is so important. Um, and, and I think Chad and, and the folks at Ventura will, will help us with that. Um, but ultimately, you got to sit down with people, you got to look them in the eye, and you got to talk about, you know, a shared vision. You got to talk about, them wanting to be at our, at our place, wanting to build our program, uh, wanting to be at Ole Miss. And I think when we were with Kermit, you know, he was the last person that we interviewed just based on timing. And we knew within five or ten minutes that it was different. And I think that's, that's what I'm looking for here. I want to sit down across from somebody, and when you see in their eyes what their vision is, how excited they are for our opportunity, um, you know, all those things. And, and they have to fit the mold, a lot of the things we've talked about. But that's what I'm going to look for, and, and I think that search is going to be a, a very valuable uh, resource as I go into this one. Keith, uh, what is the itinerary for official visits this weekend? A lot of the recruits commit said they were coming in. Also, the assistant coaches, are they going to continue being on the road recruiting and telling them, explaining what's going on? Yeah, so the assistants will continue to be on the road. Uh, I'm actually going to meet with Coach Mack and Tyler Siski this afternoon to talk about some ins and outs of recruiting. Uh, we had a big weekend coming up this weekend that's probably going to be changed dramatically. Um, so we're going to talk about that, talk about, you know, the best way to use our official visits. Do we need to save those? Do we need to use some now? Um, you know, I'll, I'll rely kind of on those guys to help. They've been tremendous. Tyler's been tremendous so far. So I'll meet with them today at 4 o'clock, and we'll talk about kind of what that looks like moving forward. Keith, I think I easily can say I'm the only guy in this room that uh, played for a coach that got fired in the middle of a season. And that's not the important part. The important part was the next two hires after that were both bust. Neither, neither one of those guys had any Mississippi ties, not, not necessarily Ole Miss, but no Mississippi ties whatsoever. Is that going to be important to you going forward with the search? You know, I think uh, the goal is to get the best coach. And if that coach has a Mississippi tie, I think that's a positive. But if he doesn't, then if he's the best coach for our situation, that's who we're going to hire. And, you know, I think that, that you know, a lot of times you, you want to have somebody that understands the region, somebody that understands the recruiting base, a lot of those things. But sometimes, you know, maybe not necessarily a direct Mississippi tie. Um, we'll go out, we'll, we'll search the landscape, and we'll, we'll hire the best coach.